was a lot of pressure to get the images done and on time, so I learned to process uh, as quickly as possible so that it looked perfect when it left the front door. Photography is weird. It's an avenue for me to meet people, and it's an avenue for me to connect with people who I feel like I'm supposed to connect with and make pictures that I really feel like I'm supposed to make. You can't get it any better than seeing custom motorcycles on locations, having a little bit of fun, and enjoying what you do. <laughs> I would call myself an image retoucher. I basically take photographs and I enhance them, retouch them, and I've been doing that for about 25 years. I took graphic design at college. I used to run around to little small businesses because I knew they couldn't afford to go to uh, big companies to get their work done. I was very affordable. And uh, I came across a place that did color separations. And basically a color separation house is a place where they uh, prepare images and text basically so they can be printed in magazines. Retouching computers at the time were very cumbersome. All the commands were in German. They were over a million dollars. It was a five-year apprenticeship to learn and you had to join the graphic arts union which was very difficult to get into. In those days when you painted something on screen there was no uh, a way to undo that correction. You just had to keep going and uh, learn not to make a mistake. Today you, you have programs like Photoshop where they have layers, they have a lot of nice functionality on it. And uh, I've been using Photoshop for the last few years. Well, right now I'm going to take this car and uh, change the car color. And I'm also going to take the car and make it look like it's speeding along. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my background. I'm going to retouch out a little bit of the car so that when I add some motion blur to the uh, background, I don't get part of my car coming through on the image. So just very quickly going through. And, and I'm not too concerned about making it perfect at this point because I am going to blur the background quite a bit, and that will certainly hide cloning marks. There it is without the edges of the car, and I'm going to add some motion to the background. And we have a few options in here so that it looks like it's going pretty fast through here. So once I find something I'm happy with, I'll just say okay to that. And I'll just turn my car layers back on. And what I have in here are, uh, I took the wheels and I added some ra a radial blur to the wheels to make it look like they're spinning as well, because in the original car, it's just a static image. So that's on a layer. I can turn that on and off. The windows as well, this car doesn't have a driver in it, so the windows I've made a, a, a cropped out the shape of the window and I've, I've painted the windows in to, to hide the fact that there isn't a driver in there. And uh, we also have a paint color on here. I could go in and make an adjustment to that. There are certainly many, uh, many, many ways to adjust the color, but uh, now we have a car that looks like it's speeding along and the initial shot, it was just a static image of a car. Occasionally I will have some images that are more of a challenge than other ones, but uh, I've always been able to overcome that. Sometimes I'll just take a walk and think, okay, how am I going to do that? Come back, and I always have a way of figuring out something. So I've never been stuck on, uh, on an image, or I've never had an image that I couldn't uh, get to the point where the client was very happy. Sometimes uh, the images that I work on uh, tend to be very artistic and the people involved are very artistic, whether that be the photographer or the, the client or the ad agency, and they want something that's unrealistic. So if you want to have a purple T-Rex or something in an image, you know, it's pretty hard these days to find a purple T-Rex. So the next best thing is to retouch that in, and that's where I would come in, uh, creating things that don't exist. So obviously, I don't think people would have a problem with that because um, 
you know, how does one collect these images and these bits and pieces to put these artistic pieces together without some form of retouching or digital enhancement or 3D images being brought in. So I, I think, again, that's a fair way to uh, retouch. If I were a painter, I'd probably develop some form of a style. I mean, everybody would know who Picasso, I mean, they can spot that right away. But with retouching, the biggest compliment you can get is when somebody looks at an image and they say, well, I don't really see any retouching on there. So you know you've done a good job, especially if there was a lot of work that had been done to something. So in terms of me having a particular style, I do pride myself on the fact that I think I'm very good at picking up what people want in their image. Again, you don't want the image to look retouched. If people said, oh, you know, I know that image, that's so-and-so, then I think it would be very obvious that something was retouched. So in terms of having an actual style, I don't believe that I really have a style, but uh, I do believe I'm very good at interpreting what people are looking for and relaying that into an image. I actually wrote a book on my daily procedures and how I would get by in a typical day. And I wrote it from the perspective of how a client sees things, how production people see it. I usually know when an image has been completed when, uh, number one, I've completed all of the uh, requests from the ad agency or a photographer as to what they'd like to have done, um, get a client's approval on it. That's usually when I know I'm done. Um, but I'll make sure that I cover anything that I see in an image and usually I'll take it to the point where I say, you know what, this is enough. If I go any further than this, it's going to start to look unrealistic or over retouched and I don't want to go there. I just want to take it to the point where the image is natural yet believable and uh, has incorporated everything everybody wants to have in it. The people that I deal with, the photographers, the ad agencies, you can get a lot of a turnaround, you get a lot of young people coming into the business. Uh, some of the photographers I deal with are, are young, the people at the ad agencies are young. So I'm always getting the latest stuff, but it's not like I'm just relying on you know, certain people to supply me with, with things or go to a, a certain distributor. The work is always different and it's always new and it's always current. It's, it would be the latest in advertising, so it's great that way in that I do get to see the latest and greatest. The other reason uh, that I enjoy my job is that uh, I do like creative work. I get to meet uh, a lot of creative people and I think that's a lot of fun. I think uh, what makes a good picture is when you can capture the emotion in a picture. That small space and time is captured forever and from a business standpoint or a point where ad agencies are using these images and photographers um, they put a lot of effort into, into making these photographs and they try to convey a message and uh, I think if people pick up on that message then it's a successful picture. What makes a good picture, it's like what elements are you bringing in that takes a picture just from a great picture to a cover or to an award winner or something that you can look at 10 years from now and still feel. Photography is like a divine accident. Uh, when you have all elements of composition, line, framing, um, and interesting subject matter, whether that's a plant or whether that's a person or a car or whatever, it's just framing, line, composition. That's basically what makes up a photograph. It's like a little window of your eyes.
is photography art. Oh my goodness. Um, Helmut Newton would say, absolutely not. I'm not an artist. I'm just a photographer. I'm a gun for hire. I'm just a camera. You know, me, ah, I would say, um, I'm a photographer. And there is art to what I do. I am artistic, but I am not an artist. I use tools like an artist use in order to create my craft, but my final result is the photograph. I come with equipment and idea and guaranteed execution. What the result is, is a photograph. You can use that in your magazine, in your website, on a billboard, um, in your advertising campaign. Um, because it has commercial uses, maybe it's not artistic, but there's times that I photograph purely for the art of execution. So that's artistic. I shoot stylized reality. I don't like knocking out people, taking them off the backgrounds, having people floating through the air. Like with this new generation of Photoshop and digital imagery, I find that a lot of photographers are taking that digital Photoshop manipulation too far. So I brought it back to the core, which is idea and execution. And I try to do everything in camera. There has to be some, some sort of compelling element in every picture. And with my photography, I like to think when people look at them, they can say it's a Cardi picture just because of how I shoot. To me, everybody's a star. So when I get a chance to shoot a new person, whoever it may be, it's inspirational for me. And I use that as an outlet to express myself that day. Today, I'm feeling like shooting on a dark background with really high key, so that's the vibe. I'm shooting a model um, where it's basically an accessory story, so I don't want too much busyness in the background. What we're doing right now is we're just looking through some tear sheets just for poses, just to get the model a little bit of inspiration as far as like a starting point. Photography-wise, I look at everything. I look at everybody who's doing pictures and making a difference in the photography world. And then at the same time, I look at nothing. I have tunnel vision, like focused on only my eyes, only what I do, only what I want to do, and only what I want to shoot. It's like, it's like a catch-22. You have to look at photography in order to see what's current and contemporary, but at the same time, if you look too much at photography, you become influenced by what other people are doing and that changes your style. And then you become style of the month guy and uh, when people hire you, they don't really know what they're gonna get. There's sessions that changed my career, like shot Tom York from Radiohead like 11 years ago and people still talk about that session and still talk about that photograph. The band is still current and contemporary. Another great one, I just shot Eddie Griffin, who's a comedian. Um, it's the new cover of his upcoming DVD. And um, that shoot was uh, um, three hours of shooting, three hours of Eddie Griffin hanging out here doing stand-up. Like, it's really, who hangs out three hours after a shoot when you're a celebrity? Like, that's when these guys want to go home. But the energy was right here, and we really clicked. And yeah, it's just, uh, photography is weird. It's an avenue for me to meet people and it's an avenue for me to connect with people who I feel like I'm supposed to connect with and make pictures that I really feel like I'm supposed to make. More shoulder? Good, good. I like that. Stay like that. That's great. I'm a minimalist. I like to, I usually always start with one light first and then I decide whether I'm going to put in some accents but there's only one sun so primarily I like to think one light is my way. Again, sometimes I'm, I think a lot about shoots beforehand. Sometimes I intentionally don't think of the shoot at all. And I just go in, see the idea, and execute right there. The methodology is definitely different and the process is definitely different whether I'm shooting a portrait or whether I'm shooting fashion and of course whether I'm shooting a musician or a music promotion then of course I listen to the music and I apply a location that fits what they're trying to say.
I think when you're shooting a nude, whether you keep it tasteful or not is strictly style. If you're a dirty old man, you're gonna wanna have girls doing compromising things and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it still has to be contemporary, it still has to be cool, and the girl still has to be comfortable with it being out there. So I only shoot stuff that I'm comfortable with, and if I'm not comfortable with it, the model's not comfortable with it. You know, if you stop getting that excitement like a kid feels when you're editing your photos and stuff like that, like, you have to feel that. I get a rush when I look at an edit. I get a rush when I shoot it. If you stop having that feeling, you need to hang up the camera. Yeah, I like that. Most people think that a car or motorcycle picture is just one shot. Today, what we'll be shooting is about 30 different shots and compositing it together to actually create one dynamic image. For me, the most rewarding part of the actual experience as a photographer is actually taking the photo. You know, the post-production and the pre-production, they're necessary, but the actual capturing of the image is probably the best thing and the most rewarding thing for myself. And also, visiting in all these different locations and meeting the people behind the scenes is again rewarding just as much as taking the photograph. Today what I'm planning to do with this shoot is actually capture the motorcycle's essence and bring it into the actual photograph for some posters as well as some magazine articles and even some stock photography. So bringing everything together with the painter and the builder of this motorcycle, we're actually capturing a really nice scene, capturing all the essence of the actual motorcycle itself and creating a dynamic and interesting shot. What I try to do with a lot of motorcycles is set up an environment that actually relates to the actual motorcycle. So with this one, uh, it's got that hard feel with a lot of flames, all that type of stuff. And this is kind of a grungy, dirty environment, especially with the machine shards and all the machine parts on the motorcycle. So that's where it very uh, lends itself into that whole aspect of the grunginess. But when I light it and actually do our uh, lighting technique for the motorcycles, it brings out the motorcycle and uh, basically suppresses the background but it's still all there it's all supporting material so that's why I try to find different locations for different motorcycles and each motorcycle lends itself to a different location all right Mike I think that's good so what we'll do is we'll do your uh, portrait now I got over thirty thousand dollars invested in my bike and I this is why I'm really excited about getting it uh, photographed professionally it's good just looking straight in, Mike, eyes wide open. It's good, just like that, nice. I definitely do work with people in photography, but it's not your typical, like, fashion type stuff. What we do is we take real people in real positions, and that's the style of photography that I like to do with my uh, people photography, is that really high dynamic contrast uh, imagery. Just beautiful. That's probably one of my favorite, right there. So it's going to be about an hour for me to shoot the bike, yeah. and then uh, we'll go from there. So. Okay. All right. Great meeting you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. The detail on this bike here is very important, especially when I was choosing this shot uh, because of the actual depth of the flames, as well as the incorporation of the different elements, and it's tied all together. The paint, the parts, and even like molding like on the air breather here, there's actually a molded skull, which is painted like a skull. So painting and the actual mechanical parts have been brought together to create an art form. With any motorcycle, the paint is actually one thing that we definitely see. And there, the makeup artist is actually the painter for these motorcycles and just takes it to that next level of custom ability. I have a 
about a four-year relationship with John. He's taken probably five or six uh, different theme shoots of bikes that I've painted. They've been in calendars, they've been in promo features, they've been in magazines. He does an awesome, awesome job and he really accentuates the work that I do. Each part of the motorcycle that we do, uh, we photograph today, is actually lit all individually. Uh, the reason being is because you can't light chrome the same way that you light something like black leather. You can do it if you're in the perfect studio situation and you got all the time in the world. But, you know, since we're on location here, we'll have tons of different reflections in the actual shot, so we do it the way we do it by layering it to get what we want. We've developed a special technique that we actually do multiple images and layer it all together to actually create the single image, especially with the motorcycles. Because there's certain parts on a motorcycle that you can't light traditionally because we have to have an actual light inside the shot. So that's where we do do a technique that needs to be digital, but we've kind of evolved from when we did shoot film into the digital technology and said, hey, how can we make this even better? So being a location photographer, I take on a various range of clientele. Uh, everything from interior designers to custom home builders and architects, all the way to industrial manufacturers. We do corporate clientele, educational work as well, and uh, definitely a bunch of different things to actually incorporate into it. But the one common thread that I have with all my clients is that we're on location. Food photography on location is very, very interesting because you have to deal with the chef, you have to actually deal with all the food products, and then you have the element of location. Now if we were to take that into studio, it would take a lot longer per shot to do because then all of a sudden we have to do all the set design. that I'm shooting with today and the technique that I'm shooting with today was driven solely by the technology because without the technology I can't actually produce the shots that I create this way you can produce motorcycle images or you know various product images with one shot but to grab all the details of the motorcycle it's very hard to actually get that one key thing of being a location photographer like myself, commercially, is we have to have two of everything. Two or three of everything. So we have two cameras, two sets of lenses, two sets of lighting, just in case, you know, assistant drops a camera or it falls off a ladder or anything like that. You know, it does add to the cost. You know, when we're buying cameras, you know, $50,000 for a camera, it's expensive to have two of them or three of them, but it's a fact of life. <laughs> so. We do it because we love it. All right, we got it.